Um, hello, my name is Nathaniel Graham, and today I'm going to be presenting my statistics project. Alright, so the article that I've chosen is The Ultimate Halloween Power Candy Ranking by Walt Hickey. So, um, this, this article basically goes over the most preferred Halloween candy, what, peop uh, what candy people would most prefer during Halloween time. And so what he did is, or what they did is they conducted a survey um, that was done where Halloween candies were randomly pitted up against each other um, to determine the most preferred candy. And so what it means by randomly pitted up against each other is there are about, as you can see down here, 269,000 um, random matchups. So they threw a bunch of candies in a, in a section and they... Um, they had kind of a random generator or whatever that would generate 269 uh, uh, options where they put the candies up against each other just so people can't, like, rig it, you know, everyone vote Hershey or whatever, you know. That's what he talked about in the article. So around 8,371 IP addresses uh, voted on 269,000 random matchups of candies. And this... Um, was an average of 32 and a medium of about 11 pairs of IP addresses. So, for the results, um, after the survey was finished, the question was asked, how often did a fun-sized candy of a given type win its matchups against the rest of the field? And so, uh, we can see here Reese's. Um, so, in the next slide, um, the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup um, had a success rate of about 84.2%. So, um, out of all the times where Reese's was put up against something else, 84% of the time it was chosen over its competitor. Um, so, if we go to the next slide here, um, they also tested to see which factors in the candy um, resulted, if any factors of the candy would have resulted in it being chosen. And so they tested to see if a characteristic of the candy made a difference, was chocolate, fruity, sugar content. Um, they found that bars are more desirable than other candy types and found that the sugar content and price don't necessarily matter. Um, so that's really where my question kind of comes in, the new use of the data, um, which is, is the mean of sugar percent different than the mean of the price percent relating to the effect they have on the choice of the candy. So out of those two, um, does one have a difference? Uh, does one um, relate more to whether they choose a the candy or not than the other? So um, I got my descriptive statistics here. So with the sugar percent, there was a sample of about 50, um, a mean of about 0.9496, and... Um, standard deviation of 0.272912. Um, with the price percent, there was also a sample size of 50, um, a mean of 0.44416, and a standard deviation of 0.289464. So here we can kind of develop our hypotheses. Um, so the first hypothesis I came up with was mu1 is equal to mu2, and then we're looking for a difference here so is there a difference? Is it different? So um, mu1 is not equal to mu2 is the second one. It's the one we're testing for. So I did my t-test, and that came out with a significance of 0.253. And with the information, I also calculated my p-value, which came out as 0.599. So obviously, since the p-value is higher than the t, um, we can fail to reject this null hypothesis and claim that there is insufficient evidence to claim that the difference of sugar percent and price percent are different relating to candy choice. So for my last slide here, we can see a kind of a bar bar chart here where it shows the, um, the levels of price percentage um, relating to the candy and the level of sugar content relating to the candy and you can kind of see that down there the blue being the sugar percent and the orange being the price percent so yeah thank you for watching my presentation